Hi pals and Merry Christmas to you guys. I haven't put up a video for three days now because yeah I've just been taking a time out celebrating Christmas with my family and stuff but I'm back again now probably putting up a video every day again now or nearly every day and I just want to wish all of you guys uh, a very very nice Christmas, good holidays and uh, just make the most of it, play some World of Tanks or stuff, I don't know but um, yeah just thanks a lot for I just I say that very often but I just cannot say it enough thanks a lot for being my subscribers for watching my videos it means a lot to me you guys basically are my pocket money and <laughs> thanks a lot for watching my vids I hope you still enjoy them as much as always so I've been taking full advantage of the discounts for the new year and holiday and Christmas and stuff so I've been buying a lot of new tanks for example I've now got this beast here the AMX 50 Foch 155 tier 10 French tank destroyer it's an absolute beast it's absolutely amazing some videos of it coming up soon uh, also I've invested in let's see what have we got I've invested in IS6 but it's in battle right now, but I've got an IS-6 too. I've also got myself an SU-12244, amazing vehicle. Uh, videos coming up about that too. And I've also free XP'd my way up the Japanese tank line, as uh, if you've watched my review of the STB-1 on the test server, you'll know that I really love these tanks. Or, well, not this tank, but I like the tier 10 vehicle. So that's why I'm grinding up towards them. But today it's not about stuff like that, today it's a bit of a disappointment really, because I'll be talking about this little bit of shit here, the 5916. This is probably one of the worst tanks I've ever driven in my World of Tanks career. It can be fun in some situations, but basically it's really underpowered and not really a match to equally tiered or higher tier tanks and not even too many lower tier tanks in the game so we'll be having a review of this vehicle and it's a tier 6 Chinese light tank I'll be comparing it to the AMX 12T which obviously is the other tier 6 light tank and they both compare really really well just because they've both got autoloaders and this tank if it's ignored and in the right situation it can actually dish out loads of damage but the thing is that the situation nearly never is right. And, and I'll be showing you guys some replays in which I'll be doing really well with this tank. Or not really well, but quite well. But really, that's not the average way this tank performs. This tank really is not very good. If we looked at it in the tech tree... Oh no, that's the service record, sorry. If we looked at the tech tree here in China, we can see that after tier 5, you can either go down the medium tanks or the light tanks to get to the 121, the tier 10 medium tank, which I just absolutely love and can't wait to get. So, yeah, I originally, I was intending to go down the medium tank line because I figured, first of all, I'm not much of a light tank driver. And secondly, your crew loses a lot of experience when you change tank classes. And at tier eight, your crew skilled really well already. So, I didn't really want to retrain them for the WZ120 at that point and I figured that I would lose less crew experience when going to the 120 from the T34-2. I reconsidered and decided to go down the light tanks after all. Uh, there are some pretty good reasons for that. First of all, the light tanks generally are a lot better than the medium tanks. And another good reason is if you look at the T34-2, Dash two, you can see the top gun on this tank is the 100 mm 59-100T. If we look at the WZ120, you can see that is the stock gun. It's a really bad gun at tier 9. If we look at the WZ132 for tier 8 light tank, you can see this tank gets the 100mm 60-100T, which is the first upgraded gun on the WZ120 and will make grinding out the experience for the even better equipment a lot easier. And that's, I mean, if you can get a light tank that gets a better gun than the medium tank. I mean, the, this tank here hasn't really got all that good armor except for the turret, but the hull is really weakly armored. So basically most shots are gonna penetrate this tank anyway. The light tank has got better maneuverability. It keeps its camel rating while on the move and it's got a better gun. So why on earth would you get the medium tank? I don't understand it. So 
that's why I reconsidered, decided to go down the light tanks. And the only problem with going down the light tanks for me was that I had to grind through this retard of a tank here, the 5916. It really, really is bad. So we'll just have a quick look at the stats and I'll be comparing it to the AMX 12T as I already said. So You've got 600 hit points on the AMX 12T. The 5916 gets 580. Obviously, they're light tanks. They're not supposed to have lots of health. For example, the average tier 6 heavy tank would get something like 800, between 800 and 900 hit points. They only get around 600. But, you know, that's absolutely normal for light tanks, not to have a lot of armor. The 5916 is quite a bit heavier actually than the AMX 12T which means that if you're engaging a 12T you will be able to ram him and that's that will give you quite an important advantage because you'll be often meeting these French light tanks when you're driving your Chinese tanks. The engine is a lot more powerful on the 5916 meaning that this tank gets an amazing power to weight ratio of 25.52 while the AMX 12T only gets 20.32, which is, for a light tank, quite disappointing, actually. So, the 5916 will be quite a bit more manoeuvrable, actually, than the 12T. Also, this tank gets exactly the same top speed limit, but the traverse speed is significantly better. 54 degrees traverse speed is really good. And that's the major drawback of the French medium tank line and its light tanks as well. But their traverse speed compared to their top speed limit is really bad. And that will, if you're going at your highest speed and then you're turning a corner, you'll get real problems in these tanks. And also circling manoeuvres, like carousel manoeuvres, can be really, really difficult. If we look at the armour, we can see that, ridiculously enough, the AMX 12T actually gets more armour frontally than the Chinese tank. Although the turret is got more arm has got more armour on the Chinese, but it's not much. There's not much in it, and they're both basically paper tanks, and everything will be able to penetrate them. You should not ever be counting on bouncers in these tanks, and. We don't expect them to have armour because they are light tanks. I mean, the turret can now and again pull off a really lucky bounce, but just do not rely on it. Next, we'll come to the guns. And the guns, the gun is just the, the real letdown about this tank. We'll just quickly have a look at its re research tree. You start off with a 57mm gun, which is the same gun as the Type T-34 uses and the T-34. It's a really good gun at T-5. At tier 6, it starts to become not all that good anymore. This tank is a scout. It gets tier 6 scout matchmaking. That means you will be meeting tier 10 vehicles. If we look at the penetration, 112mm of penetration at tier 10 is not very good really. And 85 damage. I mean, if you fire at a mouse, for example, with this, for the un if in the unlikely case that you penetrate, he won't even realise that you're shooting at him. I mean, 85 damage is ridiculously little. So, after that, you can unlock the 76mm gun right here, which is even worse than the gun before, really. It's actually more of, of a downgrade, because it only gets 85mm of penetration. That's ridiculous ridiculously bad and if you think you'll be able to cheat your way through with premium ammo you're mistaken because the premium ammo even gets less penetration than on the gun that you had on the stock equipment so this gun is really really bad it's worse in every single respect except for the alpha damage from the gun uh, that you get before this so I would unlock this gun I would not mount it never ever use this gun on this tank it's so so bad then you get the turret, and after that you get the tier 6 gun, which is also a 76mm gun, but this gun is an autoloader. And this gun is still really bad, but it's not quite as bad as the other two guns. So, I will be comparing this gun here to the AMX 12T's gun. These are the two guns. On the right side we've got the 5916, on the left side we've got the AMX 12T. And, first of all, the AMX 12T's gun has got 75 millimeters only, while the 5916 gets a 76 millimeter gun. But that's not really that important. 
Both of them are autoloader guns. Obviously, the French has got an autoloader. But the 5916, that's actually quite a surprise. And that's interesting because the 5916 is quite a rare tank to be seen on the battlefield. And a lot of tanks are surprised when they see a Chinese vehicle with an autoloader on it. And this is the only Chinese tank in the game that mounts an autoloader gun. And of course the WZ-131 also can mount this gun, but I would never ever recommend that. But in the right situation, this gun here can really cause some damage. But as I already pointed out at the beginning of this video, these kind of situations arise really, really seldomly. And now the Chinese autoloader has got a significant disadvantage uh, compared to the French autoloader, which is that it only gets five shells in its magazine rather than six, which the French does. If you're engaging a 12T, that can have a significant impact because it will mean that a lot of the time, except for if you get really lucky and make each of your shots count and a lot of your shots, shots roll above that uh, average with the damage, you won't be able to kill an AMX-12T in one clip. While an AMX-12T will be easily able to take you out every single time. But the f Chinese gun has got one big f advantage over the French gun, which is that it only has to reload 1.33 seconds between its shots. That's amazing. That's really, really short. I think before the Japanese tier 7 tank was introduced to the game, this was the fastest reload of an autoloader clip within the clip. That's really, really good. Also, your clip reloads within 10 seconds. That's nothing. While the French clip loads within 20 seconds that's a lot longer and a big disadvantage compared to the Chinese gun so up till now the Chinese gun is looking like for a lot better gun but well if you think that's the case you're very mistaken because <laughs> next we move on to the penetration and it's got this and it's got this crappy Chinese penetration again 85 millimeters that's it's so ridiculously bad this tank will get thrown into tier 10 matches try penetrating any tier 10 heavy tank from any angle with that kind of penetration you will fail there's nearly no tank at tier 10 except for maybe a leopard one if you get it from the rear that you could penetrate you will you will bounce off the upper glaciers of leopard one with this ammunition here it's just ridiculously bad and as I already pointed out, the premium penetration is really bad as well. If we compare that to the French gun, it at least gets 144mm of penetration and a very good 202 with premium ammo. And that's a lot better than with the Chinese gun and will give you a significant advantage over it if you're engaging higher tier tanks. The damage is also higher with the French gun, you've got 135 average damage, while you've only got 115 with the Chinese gun. The accuracy is exactly the same and the aim time is better on the Chinese. So all in all, I think it's very difficult to decide which gun is better because on the one hand, if you're for example engaging lightly armoured targets like artillery or enemy scouts with this gun, you'll be at, the, at a really big advantage because you can pump out your shots really quickly your clip reloads really quickly too and your aiming time is a lot better so in those kind of situations this gun will be better but if you are for example trying to engage enemy heavies and carousel them with this gun you won't really stand a chance well this gun will really be able to slice through their side and rear armor usually and if you get flanking shots at enemies which often happens with the french tank you'll really be able to make them happen while the Chinese tank will usually penetrate and um, will usually bounce especially at range so yeah that really for me defines the way you have to play these two tanks I play my AMX 12T as more of a damage dealer really you're aiming the French light tanks to stay alive till the late stages of the game and then really really clear up on the battlefield while in the Chinese your options are really limited. You you can only really engage enemy scouts and artillery with this gun, and except for that, you should just basically play it as a passive scout. So, having discussed the guns, let's quickly have a look at the few stats that we've got left and haven't looked at. We'll start off with the turret traverse speed, which is four degrees better on the Chinese tank. That's uh, quite an important stat actually on light tanks, and will 
give you an advantage when you're carouseling enemy vehicles. However, your bad traverse speed means that your turret on the AMX-12 will easily be able to keep up with carousel manoeuvres too. But I wouldn't really recommend carouseling with the AMX-12 too because of your sluggish traverse. The view range is exactly the same, 380 meters. Now, that is quite disappointing because if you consider that you want to be playing the 5916 as a scout and you will get into tier 10 and 9 and 8 games all these tanks will be able to spot you before you spot them basically so scouting in this vehicle will be really difficult because you just have not your view range is not competitive so that's a real drawback and your signal range is exactly the same but the um, amx 12t suffers from exactly the same drawbacks and that's a real disadvantage with these two tanks so all in all i'd probably prefer the amx 12t just because its gun has got that little bit more punch and can really deal out some more damage it's got a higher chance of penetrating and can really hurt enemy higher tier tanks and also medium and heavy tanks if it engages them i think the 5916 it's got advantages over the amx 12t but it's also got disadvantages and all in all i'd rather be driving a 12t than a 5916 so if you i don't know why on earth you would want to keep this tank but if you for some reason just like it and want to keep it i would probably i would definitely mount camouflage net and the binox because if you are scouting, which I would highly recommend, because that's one of the only things this tank's really good at, you will be passive scouting, so you should use your camouflage net and your binox, and you really need your binox to maximise your view range, which is quite bad in the first place. Interestingly, this tank here can mount a tank gun rammer, although it's got an autoloader, that's really, really interesting, and that's how I would really recommend to mount it, so that will give you a big advantage, for example, when you're engaging AMX-12Ts or something, so you really want to mount this gun rammer to get the most benefit out of your rate of fire, for example, when engaging enemy scouts or artillery, and for crew skills, as it's a light tank and keeps its camo value while you're on the move you want to get camouflage on your entire crew and once you're finished with that you definitely want to swap it for six cents of the commander after that i would get off-road driving maybe on your driver snapshot probably on your gunner or maybe let's see what other skills has he got uh, you could get designated target that would be useful for passive scouting probably that would be better than snapshot but it's a perk so you could trade camo for it probably and then for your loader you obviously want to have safe storage because getting ammo racked in uh, auto loader tank is really horrible so there we go that's crew skills and equipment out of the way i'll just quickly talk about the tactics in this tank i've already kind of done it but i'll just quickly summarize them again for you you have to use this tank as a passive scout really if you don't know what passive scouting is what you do is you try to predict early enemy movements and then you park your tank behind a bush on the way that the enemy tanks will go and then you basically just sit behind that bush and don't do anything for the entire game just sit behind the bush and light up enemy tanks so that your teammates can snipe them from behind you and if you've got high camo values like in this tank, you've got camo skill, camo net and binox, you should be able to really do that effectively. And you should use your really good speed that you've got in this tank and power to weight ratio to get into position quickly and spot enemies. You can also use it as an active scout. Active scouting basically means that you run around the battlefield try to make your movements erratic and unpredictable to avoid enemy shots. However, Active scouting is a lot less productive and a lot more dangerous, so sometimes it can really pay off, but usually I would use this tank as a passive scout, really. Now, ironically, I haven't got a passive scout replay lined up for you guys, I think, but only an active scout replay, but, you know, never mind. Anyway, another great thing about this tank is that if you are engaging enemy scouts or artillery, you'll be at a really big advantage due to your fast-firing autoloader which trades penetration for really good rate of fire so i would really recommend to try to break through to the enemy artillery and take it out that will really really be useful for your team also you should try to intercept enemy scouts when they try to rush to kill your artillery or flank round and uh, attack your teammates in the rear 
Then, once you, for example, are on the enemy base and have taken out the enemy artillery, you could come round, then it's your turn to attack the enemies in the rear, and that's the only kind of situation in which you can really negate your bad penetration for a few seconds and just unload on the enemies. But then they will realise and turn around, you just basically have to run for it because you won't survive a front on engagement because you won't be able to penetrate anything, not even with premium shells. Uh, I hope that gave you a good overview of the stats of this tanker's performance, crew skills, equipment and the tactics and that's how to apply those on the battlefield. So so here we are in Fisherman's Bay and I'm obviously in my 5916 and here you can see the kind of matchmaking you get and this is still a pretty decent game because it's mostly tier 8s but you can get games with tier 10s in it only. So yeah that's still acceptable or average matchmaking here but you can see there are quite a few tier 9 tanks in each team. So right there you could just see how quickly my autoloader clip fully reloaded. And what I'm doing here is I'm kind of making for the center part of this map here, this kind of ridge in the center. Because you can also get some, you can always get some early scout uh, spots off here. So I'm just, I just went to the left end of this ridge and I'm just basically driving up this road, looking for enemy scouts, trying to intercept them. But there's only one enemy scout, really, the MT25. He's already been spotted and is being killed. Let's see what have we got there. Um, an IS3 and a Centurion. So we spotted all those guys probably. But now I have to kind of get out of here because it's not looking all that good anymore. Now this here is a typical, um, a typical example for active scouting or also roaming. So I'm basically just moving around all the time, switching from switching sides of the map, uh, and you can see that IS just that his shot went nowhere near my tank, just because I was so fast that he couldn't really aim his gun at me properly. And uh, now I just get out of here before he can put a second shot into me. Basically, in these kind of games, except for if you're fighting against tank destroyers, you will usually be able to take one shot, and after that, the second shot you take, you're going to be dead. So your HP pool is very, very low, and you have to really be careful about taking shots. You really cannot afford to soak up damage here. Now, I'm trying to get some shots off of those guys, some flanking shots, but I just can't make it happen. So I decide to go back to where I was. And what I forgot to mention in the garage was I said you should equip camo net and binox. But if you are a if you want to play this tank as an active scout, if you just there's no if there's just no way you are going to passively scout in this vehicle, then I would not recommend fitting camo um camo net and binox because they only activate when you're stationary. In that case, you should fit coated optics instead of binox. And then for the third piece of equipment, you maybe should get ventilation or vertical stabilizer or something. Gun lane drive, probably. Something like that. So I'm basically trying to hit the Centurion, but I just miss all my shots. But you can see, because of my good speed and because they are just ignoring me, I was able to break through to the enemy base. And now I'm going to hunt the artillery. And this is really the kind of situation in which you want to be in with your tank in the 5916. So. I'm just going to try to make some shots happen on that Centurion there. And you can see my first shot tracks him, my second shot misses him. My second shot track, my uh, third shot tracks him. I bounce and my last shot, I aim it. And you can see I had, I basically had no chance penetrating that Centurion from the rear. That's just the kind of problem with, that you have with this tank. Now, I don't quite understand why I didn't go to the K7 area because the RT spotted over there. I really don't know what I was thinking because that's really my biggest prior priority at the moment and you can see enemy heavies are coming back to kill me so I really have to take up this RT as fast as possible and he just donked a shot which is really good because he has to reload for a long time our RT splashes on him and I can basically just chill here and unload on him and look how quickly we can pump out this damage and he just give gave up there so I get my first kill on the enemy RT that's very very important for our team but the game is basically the enemy team's fate sealed at this point so again reloading I'm gonna go for that KV3 in a second and there we go and our arty finished him off yeah our arty gets him so that's good news because he was just about to swing his turret around at me Next, I'm going to go to the city probably to try and help out because it's not looking all that good for us there. Enemies could easily push through to our base really. So yeah, that's where I'm going.
Don't my first shot at the tiger. Driving like a bit of a retard there. Sorry. <laughs> so I'm right on the tiger's ass now. Now I can really unload on him. But you can see, even low, I have to actually aim at his lower glaciers from the rear. That's ridiculous. Like, from my five shots, only two penetrated the rear of a tiger. That's just really, really poor penetration. You see, I'm just bouncing off. I can't. Oh, my days. And I just basically go for his tracks. And there's an E75 there. I, and you can see my ammo racks blown. So that's really why you want to get um, safe storage in this tank. Now, I'm just basically... And... Oh, I... I can't... I drove like an absolute spastic there. That was... So, that was that really was not necessary. Obviously, we won this game, but that was so stupid of me. I really drove like a super spaz in that game. <laughs> it just... That was so stupid. Why couldn't I just pull behind the corner? It was just something... I don't know, maybe... Maybe my tank didn't accelerate quick enough. I'm not sure, but... That E75 really should not have got me out. So that was just, that was really stupid. That was bad gameplay from me there. But I hope that showcased some active scouting in this tank and what you can do to lightly armored enemies. For example, the artillery. But you could see when I was trying to penetrate the rear of a tiger, I basically did not stand a chance and he owned me. So yeah, you just, you cannot really, even if you get the rear of your enemies, this tank is really, really bad. And that's just why I don't like this tank, because of the poor penetration. So, I've got one more game lined up for you, and then we'll have a summary. So, let's head in. So, our second game of the day is on Ensk, which is not really a very favourable scout map. Because, well, there are a lot of streets, not many scouting opportunities. But I've got a plan on this map, and the matchmaking is really generous. It's mostly a tier 6 game with two tier 7s on each team. This is like probably the best MM I ever got in this tank. So I best make the most of it. Now what you see me do here is I'm going to position right here in this railway track here. Waiting for enemies to pass over so that I can snipe them with my pretty decent view range at tier 6. And at this kind of tier you can really do good scouting in this tank because your view range is still view range sorry i've got pr real problems pronouncing some words uh, anyway the view range is um, still superior to those of your competitors so at tier six you can still do good scouting and what you saw me do there is i took down that little house there so that i can get good shots of enemies passing over but by now realistically nobody's going to come over anymore I'm just going to wait a little bit longer and then I'm going to go through. What I'm going to what my plan is basically to rush in and then flank round and attack my enemies from the rear basically. And this Cromwell's going in so I'm not going to let him have all the fun for us himself so I'm going to follow him and hopefully I'll be able to overtake him to get the early spots on artillery and all the other tanks there to get some extra experience. In retrospect, I probably should have gone earlier so that he didn't get the spots because, yeah, I probably would have gotten more XP like this. Okay, there's the Hummel. That's good news. So I'm just, I'm not going to care about all these other tanks here. I'm just going to focus on the Hummel. And you can see the amazing damage dealing potential of this tank right here. So we take out the artillery. That's really good. And all the other tanks are not focusing on me. So I get some cheeky damage in on the Yak Panzer IV and now I'm retreating because I know that I cannot engage those two heavy tanks or the one heavy tank and the tank destroyer on my own. So I'm retreating, reloading and getting into cover behind all these allied heavy tanks here. Now mind you this is a patch 8.8 .8 replay so it's not able, um, so people are not able yet to fire through these walls and so on so I'm pretty safe here. In patch 8.10, I probably would have played it a bit differently. So there's E25. This is a really dangerous engagement because he's got a really good gun that can deal a lot of damage against me, for example. You can see my ammo rack's gone again. So safe storage is really recommendable in this tank. And I, rec uh, um, I repair it now. And you see, in an AMX 12 tier, I would have been probably able to take out that E25. I track him and take him out. 
But the real advantage of this tank compared to the AMX 12T is how quickly it can pump out its shots and how fast the clip reloads. And if you're firing at something like an E25, your bar penetration potential doesn't really matter. You could see I put a very, very lucky shot in there through the uh, Jagdpanzer IV's lower glaciers, very clutch. And I think he's aiming at me, so I don't want to take any risks. He shot. So, yeah. I, I'm basically, I can't really do all that much in this game anymore now. There are only three tanks left. But, you know, I'm still very fast, so I can do some cleaning up. And a Cromwell and AMX 12T, I should be able to penetrate them probably. Okay, now there's only the AMX 12T left. He hasn't been spotted, so we'll have to see. I don't really know where he is. Although maybe when I was playing this game, I had XVM, so maybe I had a very good idea of where he was after all. So, let's see, can we, no, we can't, I just didn't fire at the front of that Churchill because I knew I wouldn't penetrate. So, now you see me capping, uh, in retrospect, I probably should have gone chased for AMX 12T, because he's one of the few tanks for enemy team that I can't actually penetrate. And there he's spotted. So I decide, okay, screw capping. I'm gonna get the kill, hopefully. And there are quite a few enemy tanks who want him, they want him, but he's not aiming at me. And just because I drove too far, I couldn't pick up my third kill, what a shame. But this was more or less the best game I had in my 59-16, so it was all right, but it wasn't all that good. And yeah, let's have a look at the after game stats and see how well we did exactly. So, I got 34,675 credits and 2.624k experience out of that game, but that was my daily double for the first victory. So, also I picked up the first class mastery badge, although that game was not actually all that good. If we look at the experience score, I picked up the most experience of the entire team, 875, closely followed by the Yak Panther, and I also dealt a lot of damage, 1081, but not quite as so much as, for example, the Jagdpan for over M6. Now, this is really interesting. If we look for experience score, 875 experience was enough to get me my first class mastery badge. That means that you can probably get the mastery badge, badge ace tanker with, say, 900 or 1000 experience in this tank. That's really little, and that just shows you how bad people are actually doing in this tank and how what a bad tank it is because basically you get experience for dealing damage and this tank is not very good at dealing damage because it just cannot penetrate any tanks. And now with patch 8.9 of the introduction of the new German glass cannon tank destroyers, this tank's doing a bit better I must say because you like these all these Rheinmetall Borsig Waffenträgers and so on, you can just easily feast on them basically with your autoloader cannon and your penetration just doesn't bother you. But although there are quite a few of those tanks around now lately, you cannot guarantee that there's going to be one of those tanks in each game and that you will meet them on the battlefield and actually be able to fire shots at them. So, yeah, you just basically have to rely on scouting usually to get the experience in this tank. And this tank is really the worst Chinese tank that I've played up till now and I think it is the worst tank in the Chinese tech tree although the T-34-2 is also quite bad but I think the T-34-2 at least with a 100mm gun can still deal some good damage and it's also quite maneuverable for a medium tank this tank here just it's just not really very good in any aspect except for its maneuverability not even its view range is all that good for a tank that gets thrown into tier 10 matches really so yeah, all in all, I really think this is one of the weakest tanks in the game, tier 4 tier, and the fact that its matchmaking is so unforgiving really means that you won't have any chance to basically kill any low tier tanks. You basically have to rely on really lightly armored enemies like artillery or scouts to run into you or you to find them and then be able to take them out. That's the only way you will realistically be able to deal any damage in this tank and I really could not wait to see the back of this tank. I'm going to sell it right after I finish this review here which is going to be in a few seconds so hooray. And I'm now on to the WZ-131 which is absolutely amazing. I'm all over that tank. It's so good. And the 132 Two is going to be good too probably so I think it's worthwhile going through this tank I mean I've had some all right games in it I must say it's not like it's a horrific tank but it's just you know 
not all that good. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this review anyway and you learned some useful things about this vehicle, although it might not be that good. And, um, yeah, thanks for watching as usual. And I, as I already pointed out, there's a lot of good stuff coming up over the next few days. I'll also hopefully be catching up on some tutorials that I wanted to do for a long time now because, um, yeah, I just haven't done a tutorial in half a year or something. And I think they're pretty important. So, that will be coming up soon too about ammo types and about scouting and stuff like that. So I hope you're looking forward to that. I definitely am. Thanks for watching as usual and I'll see you out there on the battlefield. Bye bye.